Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to crush, humiliate, and totally destroy your competition in your fantasy football draft. It's incredibly simple, so let me just break it down for you. Ultimate Draft Kit. The Ultimate Draft Kit for the fantasy footballers is hands down the best fantasy tool in existence. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's got sleepers, it's got busts, injury updates, full projections. This thing's even got full dynasty rankings. Don't overthink this. It's the only wingman you'll need this year. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com and grab your copy right away. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The only way you upgrade Darren Waller is Tom Cruise, Mike, and we all know that. Great, great friend of the show, Tommy C. I don't, I don't know if you guys, Tommy C. Saw him. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, a, I never heard him called that at all. You must be close, close friends with old Tommy yeah, C. With old T Cat. Look, we're 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 text buddies. Clearly, we. We get along great. I don't know if you saw, but he has had his fill. Like Tom Cruise, legendary actor, does all his own stunts, does like insane things that that most people w- would never even give two thoughts about doing. And he's like, no, no, we, I need to do this for a movie. Have you seen this blurb mm-hmm. that Tom Cruise, the next step is, no, his, his next movie, he needs to shoot the entire thing in outer space. This not, is what t- this is where Tom Cruise has to go. He's done everything he needs to do on Earth. Yeah, not make a space movie. That's been done. <laughs> Shoot the movie. Let's make in a space. movie in space. And That's what different. I think is kind of incredible about that is like he's gonna get if, if this happens, he will get so much credit of like, oh my gosh, he shot a movie in space. The camera people who have <laughs> none, yeah, none, none, everybody up there, the whole crew getting things ready for old Tommy's, uh, you know, big wild publicity run. Point. Do you get an Oscar just because you filmed a movie in a really difficult location? Is that going to factor in? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, for a, sure. For did sure. Did Apollo 13 win anything? No, it's know. it's not necessarily for best actor, but they'll get some Oscars because they special did that. credit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for going through space some Oscars, hardships. space Oscars. Yeah, <laughs> no, sweep, clean sweep. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thursday, May fourteenth. Buy sell on the show today. We're going to answer a ton of mailbag questions. Talk fantasy football. The rankings are uh, our inaugural oh. first set of rankings. We've all gone through player by player, team by team, uh, and we, we've done it. We, we've made it through. They're perfect. Uh, they're, they're never going to change. They're absolutely the exact same as the final end of year finish will be. And so you're talking about my rankings. That's right, Jason. Yours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was, That's why I, was I didn't bother to do them. Right. Yeah. Well, Your rankings the, with Ryan Tannehill in the late twenties. Those rankings. It's, it's, it was surprising to myself, but the rankings are so it was much surprising fun to, to Mister Tannehill too. He told me he was yeah he was very not, aghast, he was not happy. <laughs> but you know, I just calls him how I sees him. <gasps> Jason but, uh, Moore. Next this <laughs> this year, dare you? <laughs> this next week, we're gonna have a explain yourself episode going through some of those rankings where we disagree. That's gonna. I am really looking forward to that. I think that's Tuesday's episode. Yeah. So check it out. Thefantasyfootballers dot com. The rankings are up there. Stay water. We will. We'll be paying attention to the news, depth charts, everything that happens this off season, tweaking, adjusting rankings all the time. But you can go check them out right now at the fantasyfootballers.com. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And we appreciate all the support, the reviews, subscribing over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, ad free on Stitcher Premium, wherever you listen. We're happy you're here. Uh, maybe you're in space. I don't know. Maybe you're hanging out with Tommy. Tommy C, is it? T-Cat? T- 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 well, he's a man t- of a cat? thousand names. Yeah, Space Cat. Well, he wanted to remind <laughs> you about the Ultimate Draft Kit, which you can find at UltimateDraftKit.com. It space is out cat. in just just over two weeks. Yeah, we're getting That's there. That's the, the new way that I'm, I'm going to phrase it. Just over two weeks away, the Ultimate Draft Kit. It is uh, the best way to get ready for the 2020 season. You get access to the app. You get access online. 
Yeah, uh, Jason. You get pre-sale pricing right now. Yeah, yeah. Jason's very excited about it. I know that. I, I am. We've worked so hard this quarantine season on uh, getting everything done. The app is looking great. The I mean, I, I'm I'm very excited, uh, although also nervous about the timeline. Just so much to do. Well, I mean, most of the most years that we've had the ultimate draft kit, we're able to walk away from the stats for a little while. But now we're quarantined with them, so it's mm-hmm. close quarters mm-hmm. with the stats constantly. Yeah, you can't social distance from no. spreadsheets. No, they're everywhere. <laughs> Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, buy or sell, Le'Veon Bell having a better fantasy finish in 2020 than he did last year. For the record, he finished as the running back 17 in half point per reception leagues. I'm buying it. I'm buying it. All right. Now, now I only have him ranked one spot higher than RB6. That's a buy. But it's a buy. And the price, the price will be so much lower this year unless we do something stupid on this show and change the price. <laughs> Wait, how, how dare you insinuate we do anything stupid on yeah. this show? Stupid for me. Stupid for me getting Lev Bell as a, a middle round running back value type of player. So uh, look, if I love going running back early. I love it. It's what I do every year. But if you promised me that I got Lev Bell and David Montgomery in the middle rounds and I could mm. load up on the best wide receivers in football, I would be tempted. I think those two sure. guys represent interesting, high-volume middle-round players. But Frank Gore's joining this team. Where do you guys have Lev Bell? Buy or sell? Yeah, with, with Frank Gore joining the team, obviously being a year older, I know they improved their offensive line, and hopefully they'll have Sam Darnold the whole year. Although if you look at the game splits, he was actually a little worse in the games Darnold was playing. I, I have him at 18. So I'm I'm the wow. opposite of you, Andy. I have him one spot lower than he finished last year. That makes me officially a sell. And I am a pretty strong buy. I have him just outside of my top 12. The, uh, the, the target numbers, I believe, will still fully be there. They will be intact. Uh, Frank Gore doesn't really make me that nervous. Maybe Gore comes in and takes a carry here and there. And it's the overall Jets offense that I will buy as an improvement. You had Mono Boy. Like when when was Sam Darnold actually healthy? I I don't know. I mean, I guess I I never had Mono, so I have no idea how long it takes you to return from that. But I can't imagine you go from being bedridden with Mono like right back to an NFL field and be anything close to a hundred percent. Lev Bell with three rushing touchdowns, a three point two yards per carry average last year. I think both of those things go up. So I'm buying, I'm going to buy the Le'Veon Bell dip. Not that I think he's returning to a top five fantasy superstar, but I think he, like Andy, <laughs> if if we're getting him in the fourth round, like, that's unbelievable value. He, well, he only had three rushing touchdowns last season. So there, yeah. there is, uh, there's an easy path to get better. I will admit that, but obviously he's, He's not getting younger, and uh, I, I just don't I don't trust the offense. I'm not. He's buying not getting that younger like here. Frank Gore is. <laughs> right, well, Frank Gore is actually Lev Bell, getting younger. Lev Bell did finish at RB seventeen in fifteen games last year. Uh, Mike, you talked about Sam Darnold improving last year. He had to deal with the physical restrictions. I am curious how he will deal emotionally with being called Mono Boy moments ago. <laughs> that may my, cause. My bad. That may cause him some issues. <laughs> Might be but seeing they, ghosts. They have uh, they have invested Ooh. on the offensive line, and uh, it will be interesting. You know, uh, by the dip. I think that's what at least Mike and I were saying. Yep. And I'm Jason, I that. I tend to believe you think he will be a value if you have him right around where he finished last year, but the price goes down. So yeah, I have um, no problem with Le'Veon Bell. Is I mean, he's going to be a solid RB two. There's just so much volume there that if you get him you know, in the uh, third round or later, that's great. A young, high volume, but disappointing David Montgomery or Lev Bell, who would you rather have in 2020 Mm. right now? I'll take Lev. I will check my rankings and I will take take Lev Bell as well. I do too. I have Lev a couple spots higher. Just curious. You guys want to do some mailbag? Yep. Bag. Bag, oh, bag, oh. 
No mono. <laughs> All right. If you have a question for us, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button, or you can dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Wide variety of questions. Let's jump into it. Caleb on Twitter. What is the best way to evaluate proven commodities for future draft mm. picks in a dynasty league? Devontae Adams, for example. How do you look at moving proven commodities and what kind of compensation uh, equation do you bring to the table? Uh, you know, it's it's rare that I look to trade proven commodities for draft picks almost ever. Um, you know, I might use draft picks as an additive to, you know, go from one proven commodity to a slightly less proven commodity who's, you know, still, you know, is still a veteran. I still know what I'm getting, but it's, it's rare for me to take someone that is solid. Um, you know, if he's throwing out Devonta Adams as the example, this we're talking about really proven commodities. Yeah, that's rough. Um, I'm, I'm never going to be trading them for draft picks unless I'm in a complete rebuild and they're old, you know, Julio Jones, 31 years old, still carries great value, still going to be a great asset this year. You should be able to get a draft pick. That's when I'll move off. But you know, Devonte Adams has several years ahead of him. When you trade him for the one Oh one, you're, you're, you're trading him for a complete risk. I mean, Nikhil Harry last year seemed like, a uh, just an unbelievable prospect first round pick goes to the Patriots and it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't always fall the way you, you hope. Yeah. yeah and I, Corey Davis comes to mind too. in, in years past, those players yeah, that you, that draft are, that whole, are guaranteed that, that whole draft, you had uh Corey Davis, Mike Williams and, and John Ross, right? I think all those three guys were in the same draft class. Um, I could be mistaken, but just because you're an early first wide receiver does not guarantee that you are going to hit. I will say, a if you're trying to go after like a 101 if it's a running back being drafted in the top 10 that carries a lot more weight to me because those guys are going to not necessarily be elite players they teams miss on their evaluation but those guys are going to be given opportunity after opportunity to really fail i mean even Leonard Fournette who well, they is, don't, they don't they don't really fail at all i mean they just to, right. What you're well, saying I mean, is right. They they don't fail. If you're if you're a top ten NFL running back draft pick, you I mean, Trent Richardson. I I think we all can say was it was a failure. If if you're talking in terms of dynasty, <laughs> you, yeah, he had, had he had his two rookie dominant. year. It was it was great for fantasy purposes, but he didn't continue. He had no su sustained success. So if you had traded a player like Devonte Adams for a 101 and gotten Trent Richardson, you'd be really upset with that. I think what we're saying here is what you're hoping for in these draft picks is to have a, a proven commodity someday. So keep it. <laughs> well, and, and the thing is, is in Dynasty, you are like the stock market. You are looking for signals of when to unload a player before the wheels fall off. I mean, that is how you get the biggest win in a trade. Anybody can craft a perfectly fair trade but if you move Gurley at highest value before the wheels fall off if you move right. uh, a different you know Devontae AJ Freeman Green last year AJ, or, you know yeah somebody that has maximum value and you can pick it if you're confident that's the time that you can go do what Jason said get a player that's slightly less proven plus a draft pick and maybe end up winning the trade in a big way so uh, Twitter, Jeremy wants to know, what is the ceiling for Mike Evans Oof. this year? His ceiling mm. is Mike's ranking. Mike, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so it, Wait, well, it you have Mike Evans super high too, Mike? Because I know you I have do. Chris Godwin super high. I do, ha I do have him very high. Uh, and my numbers, I don't believe they're outlandish. Maybe it's just the way that other wide receivers got ranked. So let me, I'll throw out my projection for him. And you could tell me if you think that that's as, as egregious as where you think his final ranking is. So I have him at 78 receptions for just over 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns. That's that's a that's a lot of receptions. Yeah, I've got him at 74. I mean, I, I, he I'm had 67 right there. last year in 13 games. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with Mike on the reception count. Uh, I think it's a question of – you know, you you've got him with 300 more yards than I do. It's a matter of will Brady go deep 
deep as often. So I, you know, I've got him dropping. Uh, you know, he's last year was seventeen point three yards per reception. I've got him mm-hmm. down at you know in the fourteens, um, which is which is still good. So it, it, it's just a matter of what you think Brady's going to do systematically. Uh- it it feels like and Jason, you and I were talking about this, and maybe we can expand this conversation to Tampa Bay as a whole. I know we'll be doing some uh, ranking analysis. Uh, explain yourself, and we'll probably talk about it then too. But when I look at possible outcomes for Tampa Bay for Tom Brady, you know he's got something to prove. Bruce Arians does not limit the offense. He likes to throw the football. Mm-hmm. And Brady has something to prove. So you've got narrative street on that side where, look, it's been a while since Brady's been a top-tier fantasy quarterback, three years. But all the weapons are there. And the coach is there. And the chip on the shoulder is there. And Gronkowski's back. So narrative street says that, like, I just don't see a real middle ground outcome for Tampa, is my point. I feel like you either have Brady regressing as as a an aged quarterback, and it just doesn't come to fruition in Tampa. Or <laughs> you probably have a pretty high performance, high touchdown, high efficiency type of year from Brady. Do you see a middle ground for him where he just kind of moves the ball along yeah, I mean, but I, doesn't know, I, produce for fantasy owners? I think if he stinks, if he's lost a step, He'll be okay for fantasy just because of the weapons. Um, but yeah, to, to answer this question, um, Mike Evans ceiling would still be a top six wide receiver if it just so happened that he ends up with the targets and the touchdowns. Uh, you know, I've got Brady crazy high. I, I was <laughs> yes, you do. I've got Brady as my quarterback six. Um, so I'm, Woo-hoo! I'm, I am. That's spicy. It that's is just, spicy. It feels crazy. Very, uh, very high. <laughs> but when you've got. When you've got Godwin and Evans and Gronk and Howard. So the one thing he doesn't have is his pass-catching running back or a a proven pass-catching running back. Yeah, we'll see what Keyshawn Vaughn can do. It's just uh, I think we assume the passing volume will come down in some capacity, and we want it to be made up for with efficiency. Evans has had a, what, regression in multiple years running in terms of um, – the target totals. So it's it's a it's kind of a crapshoot with Brady. I mean, I, I'm not gonna pretend like I know what he has left in the tank, but he's got all the weapons to be successful. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is this is not? this is narrative y. <laughs> but watching the Jordan documentary has has given me a little there are you know, there are just certain guys the makeup, the metal behind the scenes is yeah, but, you know, but Jason, if, when you're talking Jason. about the goat, when you're talking about the greatest of all time in basketball and the greatest of all time in football, I'm not going to I'm not going to bet against Brady with those weapons. They have not made a Wizards documentary of Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. We haven't got to episode 10 yet. We'll see. That's so, yeah, when okay, Jordan that's a tra- very changes fair, teams. <laughs> that's a very fair comp. You don't want the Wizards here. That's it. Like, you don't <laughs> well, Let's want wait until episode 10 comes out and see how far Brady drops. Hmm? The, okay. the hard part is, is that team could win with a mediocre Brady. I mean, it could be successful with him just protecting the football. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Dynasty trade question from Texas Marine in Austin, Texas. Well, that makes sense. Mike Evans or Josh Jacobs in a half point per reception dynasty league. Oof. Oof. Dynasty? Yeah. I am going Josh Jacobs. I am too. Wow. It it is surprising because I'm I'm so much I'm Mike wide Evans receiver will over be turning guy. 27 years old this year. Yes. Mike Evans has never had under a thousand receiving yards in a season in his career. Uh, look, I, I, I totally understand that. I would love to have Mike Evans in Dynasty, but if you're telling me, you know, the 27-year-old versus the 22-year-old, I know it's a running back. The career's not as long, but I look at it and I say it's both like the of same these, age. In, in it, terms it, of like player it, years, they're the same age. That's exactly my point. I think both of these players have three amazing seasons ahead of them. And so... You take the running back. I'm going to take the running back if they're about equal there. And, and Evans you've got to say... We'll have a different quarterback at some point. Exactly. Like Brady is, you know, okay, two seasons from now, three seasons from now. 
is he still tied to Brady? Is Brady playing? Is it? They'll just have Jameis back next year. <laughs> sure, maybe, and, and he'll have a year un- learning under Drew Brees. But I, I do have Jacobs ahead because of the age, twenty-two years old. He's he's amazing. Let me let me ask you guys this because I've I have been firmly on Team Josh Jacobs. If you've been listening to the podcast of the off season, but these moves that the Raiders just keep making uh, at the running back position, specifically with guys that are pass catching running backs like you, you bring Jalen Richard back okay I'm not super concerned you got to have people there but now they add Devonte Booker like will Josh Jacobs actually be unleashed to the player that we believe that he should be maybe the Raiders just don't don't see I, that happening I think he will be Devonte Booker doesn't scare me they have right. to add, they have to add depth you, you also they have do, to bring but in Lynn, ba- Booker, Lynn Bowden Jr. Yeah, they drafted they, him. He's a, you know going to be one of those jack-of-all-trade guys. But they did lose DeAndre Washington. He had 40-plus uh, targets. So I've got Josh Jacobs stepping up, not to where I want him to be. You know, I want him to be one of those 70, 80-plus target guys. I've got him with 55 uh, Whoa! targets. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, that that, that alone will, will make him a, an upper-tier back. Okay. I was I was gonna go check out my yeah I have a fifty three fifty three targets so dealt with injuries last year great running back I, it is all oh, about I, opportunity I, I just don't it's confidence you know it's it's which is he one of the big breakout candidates this year I think I think he still is I think he is as well it's just would you do you trade a an elite wide receiver for a running back where you can. Get running backs in the draft. And were you, you were you like, happy with Mike Evans last year with that passing volume? I know the hmm. season that he had, but were you happy with Mike Evans? Overall, because even your ranking, even if, I th- even if I think your ranking's crazy, Mike, it's still possible he gets that ranking, and you're not you're not even you're not as happy sure. with him as you might be somebody else. It was very Amari Cooper in the sense that he he yes. was he was boom or bust, hurt a lot of people a lot of weeks when he was in your lineup, did nothing, and then he'd go out and have three touchdowns and seven thousand yards in a game. Um, I, I think the consistency will be a little bit better with Brady. Um, but your, your point is valid, Andy. All right. Instagram question from Peter. He says best and worst quarantine meal that you have made yourself. Ooh, best and worst quarantine. The worst was cereal with water. Um, (laughs) that's easy. Uh, now the best, that's also easy. Uh, birthday week. We got filet mignons. We got homemade mashed potatoes. We got rice aroni. We got stovetop stuffing. Uh, I don't even remember dessert. I was barely alive at that point. The it, be- was, the best- it was fantastic. <laughs> the best part of your wow. Trum- Truman Show complex, Jason, is that you just say birthday week as though the world knows what you're talking about. Yeah, well, I mean, like everybody, everybody <laughs> gets an entire week. week where they are. Oh, but they know about you know my thing. Yeah, what is that? The week you enslave your wife for? That your- is the week that my wife or myself, whoever's birthday it is, gets to be king or queen of the world in at least of the <laughs> of the home. So we get whatever we want at all times. I I uh, I can tell you the worst quarantine meal I made myself was uh, thirty minutes ago when I <laughs> when I took my time to cut fresh slices of sourdough. Pile it high with fresh lunch meat, uh, fresh sliced cheese. Two, it's just a beautiful, like going. well-made sandwich. And then I took a bite and I said, hmm, that doesn't taste right. And then I took another bite. And then I took oh, another bite. And then oh. I said, I must stop this because the new mayonnaise that I had just placed on the sandwich was quite expired. Oh, <laughs> oh no. You and used so, the word fresh enough times that I, I had a feeling this was not going to be a fresh sandwich. Uh, the sandwich was ruined, and oh, I was no. quite unhappy. I had to go throw it away after I saw that the date was sometime in the back part of 2019. And uh, yeah, I mean. How's your tum-tum? Well, uh, TBD. TBD, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> this is pretty <laughs> early. Need- if Andy vanishes halfway through this show, you know I'm, where he is. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to be worried about. I, I'm going to check the dates from now on. So, uh, Mike, do you have any candidates here for this question? Uh, best meal 
uh, burgers. I just <laughs> like burgers a lot. <laughs> uh, and worst meal. Uh, man, nothing's standing out. I'll, th- I'll think about it. Maybe I'll circle back to it. Now, you're still doing the quarantine thing where you're pumping iron slash eating donuts right that's the oh yeah it's and it's mostly not donuts it's mostly uh like edible cookie dough which they sell now but, in, but i also in know stores. there's donuts too there has been donuts there but <laughs> have I mean, you those, dipped the donuts in the edible cookie dough yet i don't know if you could dip it you would have to scoop the that's, edible that's cookie fine. dough spoon it on the, top yeah. look there is i still have one donut left and i still have cookie dough left so i think i know what's Let's happening happen. tonight yeah <laughs> So now, if I'm gonna, I am not around next week, <laughs> everyone knows what happened. Do you want I some died, mayonnaise? I died as I lived. Uh, I don't want to get too far into the rabbit hole of explain yourself here, but who knows? We'll just let it happen. Twitter question from Kyle. Who has the better season this year, Juju, Smith, Schuster, or Devontae Parker? Juju. Juju for me, that's, that's, uh, that's going to be easy. I think the quarterback situation is... Uh, more assured, even though there is some question with uh, Big Ben's health, um, and you've got more success uh, in the in the past than Parker's had. Ooh, I have Parker higher than Juju. Oh man, that's, you that's hate spicy. Juju. I would say that if you looked at our individual rankings and you had to pick, you know, three or four significant takeaways, the Brady ranking for Jason would be one. Um, the Hopkins ranking for Mike, which he has him down in the in the teens, mm. would be one. It and doesn't then, make me happy, everybody. And then I have Juju, uh, not worth the draft capital in my rankings. So we can talk more about that on the next episode of the show. Fair. Uh, Instagram question. Oh gosh, now we're doing it again. Another one. Who would you prefer in <laughs> Dynasty, Juju Smith Schuster or one of the rookie wide receivers? <laughs> This that, is a more a, difficult question because Juju is very young, and whether he stays in Pittsburgh or whether he goes someplace else, look, I don't. I my ranking is not, you know, some catastrophic indictment of Juju Smith Schuster's ability. I've said on this show multiple times, it takes a special talent to put up fourteen hundred yards. I don't care if AB's on the other side or whatever the case may be. So I, I, it's hard to take someone who hasn't ever broken out in the NFL. Yeah. Over someone that has when they're both. I mean, I, I have to say young. Juju. I, I just have to say Juju now. I whew. sanity prevails. <laughs> I'll I'll thank Juju. Yeah. 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 Goes back to uh, that first question. But it's it and it just man. Last year is so rough. What what it has done to the Pittsburgh Steelers and our perception of them for fantasy. Like we are we're not very removed from Pittsburgh just pumping out superstars everywhere. And and then w- one year, Big Ben goes down for the entire season. All of a sudden, we're all scared of Pittsburgh. It's, it's very strange. If Big Ben went down in his age 29 season, I don't think we'd have the same worry that we have now. You, you're probably right. So, but we also a, so have- age for Big Ben, that's where your concern it's is? It's the combination of of Ugh, age it's a lot of things it's, Mike. It's, it's a lot of things but it, it is it's the defense as well that really i mean i mean it's the identity they, of the football team it's it's the the emergence of other players it's the it's the fact that big ben has had more mediocre seasons as a fantasy quarterback than he has elite seasons so you're banking on a lot for them to well, just put up a lev bell a b big ben healthy offense is the identity season so i i just not making that bet uh, so you 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 have the entire team's identity. Just that last year, that that's a complete transformation for you. That's now who they are. Even though no, two years it, ago, it, Big Ben was over five thousand yards through the air. No, it's not. It's not that there isn't the possibility that they have a. I mean, they're going to have a better offensive season they're, no matter what. Guaranteed. And their defense is still going to be great. I'm not saying that they. Yeah, collapsing. yeah. No, but but what I'm saying is that there is a higher than I'd like percentage chance Deontay Johnson is a better year than Juju Smith-Schuster and I'm going to be paying a whole lot more for Juju in a draft when I don't want that chance to be that close that I'm drafting the wrong guy that I could I'm drafting a guy in the third round that and I could take somebody else that beats him out fantasy wise in the ninth tenth eleventh round and that's a real possibility in my opinion so um 
Not in your opinion, though, and not in Jason's, based on your <laughs> no. rankings. And no, that's I'm, fine. That's a that's a player to make a bet on. I mean, that that's totally fine. We just don't see it the same way, and I'm not willing to make the take the risk after what I saw last year. Sure. I, you know, not. I look the, the the best thing for me is I I saw nothing last year. I so I don't even know what I don't know what offense you're talking about. It you're, you just mu- <laughs> it's your gone, rankings man. would say you muted last year <laughs> from your mind. Um, Harry Carey. Uh, writes in <laughs> and says, does the addition of DeAndre Hopkins scare you off of Christian Kirk in dynasty leagues or make him a potential Oof. buy low candidate? You know, what mm. kind of scares me off a little bit was the willingness and the, and the rumors of, you know, him being shopped and looking for, uh, you know, moving him. I don't know how much validity there was to that, but it was surprising that, you know, moving forward, Christian Kirk as the two on a high pace offense, I'm not scared off of Christian Kirk. He's young. He's been successful in the NFL. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald is going is going to go away. So I like Christian Kirk, but I do worry. Do either of you worry about those rumors around the draft? That, yes. th- that the Cardinals were shopping Christian Kirk. Yeah, I, I worry about Christian Kirk. My answer to this is I I'm scared off of him in dynasty leagues. I think the window for him to emerge as a an alpha type of player is gone. And they've talked. Mm, they talked about getting rid of him, and they have lots of other weapons on that team. So I am scared off. I mean, what Christian Kirk? If I'm remembering correct, I mean, he was like him and Larry finished almost neck and neck in total targets. But Christian Kirk played in 13 games, so on, on like on a target per game basis, Christian Kirk was the number one in the offense. Yes, without DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, and he's 60, yeah, yeah, yeah. 60, yeah not, 68 yes. for 700. I mean. Just it's saying tough. that they that they were trying to turn him into that. I don't know. He's twenty. I think he's a two. I mean, I think he could be a good two on on any team in football. I just don't know if he's locked in in Arizona. Of, of like when you when you traded, you know, a couple of years ago, the thoughts that people had about Sterling Shepard. That's kind of the the type of player. That's that I, that's an excellent comp. That it I is. always saw him as. He's going to be a fine player. He's going to help you in fantasy. Uh, but but you know, Andy's a hundred percent right. Like his chance to be the alphas. That's gone. The alpha is here. It's Hopkins. Elvis Ryan says, who finishes higher in 2020? Is it Baker or is it Brady? <laughs> oh, not we've close to my got, rankings. We've all got Brady. I'm pretty sure. It is, I'm just laughing because of the, the top six, whatever it is, ranking for Jason. He's uh, just moved up. He's number two. Look, it's cra- it, it is fun. We, we've we we've shared this in the past. Um, you know, we, we, we do our early projections our rankings where we just we're sorting guys based on our our feeling our gut our history and knowledge of fantasy football but then when we get into the ultimate draft kit work and we are statting every single team out all the way doing deep dive research on every player it's fun at the end and sometimes scary to just see where the stats say players lie because it's not just a matter of the player you're statting out, but all the other players around him as well. You mm-hmm. might love a guy and he has a good stat line and he's, you know, 18 because 17 other guys, you know, look like they're going to have a better season. So I was really surprised when Tom Brady ended that high, but I've got Baker at 16, Brady at six. I doubt that if I looked at the, uh, the stat line you have for Brady, I would be, you know, I would find it, unreachable jason it's just me knowing that with him at six i know what players are back behind him and Mm -hmm. that's that's where it's it's more um interesting to me it's really about touchdowns i think is is with brady i've got him 4600 yards 35 touchdowns uh, a little higher on his interception count 14 interceptions that's a that's a dandy season it's a very good one, but not impossible I, by any stretch. I will say for Baker, he will have a better season this year than last. Does that mean he can bounce back to looking like he is a a top dynasty quarterback? That I don't think I can answer. The, yeah. And you're saying that from a fantasy perspective? Yeah. See, I think and he's going to have. A, I think he's going to have a better NFL yes. season. I'm not sure that in Stefanski's offense it'll translate to a better fantasy season or not. That's uh, where I'm curious. I have him statted for about 50 more fantasy points, which is not an insignificant number this season than he than he put in last season. So that so would put him at that would put him at like 56 on the year. <laughs> yeah. So quarterback <laughs> oh, oh, 16. No. <laughs> All right. Here here's a great would you rather question from Brett, the Hitman Fart in Portland. <laughs> 
Uh, by the way, I saw, very classy. I saw a video of Brett the Hitman Hart uh, very recently, and he is he is quite old. Would you rather be Roger Goodell or Adam Gaze? Uh, Goodell, I'll be Roger Goodell. <laughs> give, give me the what? power over the entire league. Um, yeah, and, it's not close. I mean, if you if, no. here's the other thing. Compare these two guys' sense of humor. I mean, I'm going to be the comedian Roger Goodell. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Who would you and rather he be? Is, uh, he's paid quite well to yes. be the commissioner of the NFL. Yeah, handsomely. Um, all right. How far will Philip Lindsay's production drop? This is uh, from an Instagram listener. Rosie Rules My House says, how far will his production drop? What's the highest you, you would mm. draft him? My rankings were not kind to Philip Lindsay. What about you two gentlemen? I I I don't know what to do with with the Denver backfield. I feel like Jason is bullish, so uh, uh, more bullish about Melvin Gordon. It's so bizarre because I I had just messaged our company Slack about I wrote a blurb up for Melvin Gordon for for the Ultimate Draft Kit, and for that you know I'm looking at the two stats. Like Philip Lindsay has. Half of the rushing yards of, of the career of Melvin Gordon. If Melvin Gordon's five-year career, Philip Lindsay has half of the production in two years, and the Denver Broncos were like, nah, we need Melvin Gordon. It's so bizarre to have a, a running back. For, you're paying him like no money, and he's um, just super productive for your team. Like, well, that, that's I, where the, I can't read what the Broncos want to do. That's where the nuance matters, though, because you saw – Production for Philip Lindsay, yes, the the in mass full season production is great, but as the season wore on, he wore down and his production wore down. Especially looking back a couple of years ago, they felt they needed that kind of bigger back, and they don't want to pay Lindsay big money. It, it, it's an interesting situation. I have Lindsay down at thirty seven this year. I've got Melvin at fourteen. I have. So uh, it's I have hard Lindsay to find out. I have him at 33. I have Melvin Gordon out at 24. But what, what I mean is, like, Lindsey has been excellent for your team for two years. I don't, I, I can't argue with that. You could see him wearing down. You could see the efficiency wearing down. The big explosive plays were, were not there as frequently. So get him a compliment. If you think that Royce Freeman is not the compliment, get him, get him that bigger body compliment. But it, it feels like going out and getting a player with the name of Melvin Gordon giving him that contract, it seems like you're trying to replace Philip Lindsay. Yeah, it does, it does feel that way for sure. Yeah, I think you're trying because they replace... replaced Philip Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. They're they're trying to get a a star running back in there, and then they think Philip Lindsay can be a really good two, and and they realized they didn't have a one, so they had like a two A two B situation. Um, and so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm the most split. I think I've got. Uh, Melvin Gordon at 15, Philip Lindsay's down in the 40s. Uh, so I, I had a hard time catching up to this question, though, because I, I went on a little uh, uh -oh. little rabbit hole on the Goodell's salary. Oh, yeah, it's, de it's decent. I believe last year he made $40 million, which is yeah. also known as more than any player. The highest paid player does not yeah. make that in a season. Yeah. Give me Goodell. He's probably underpaid. <laughs> it, it, do work, and he's, Goodell. And he's not in the threat of he's not in the the papers, the New York papers every week saying, "Should we fire this guy?" Like, no, yeah. he's, he's his job's pretty safe. Yeah, yeah, it is. There, there are only a handful of that running back two player that look. If if Melvin Gordon went down, right? If if Nick Chubb went down, the Lindsey, the the Kareem Hunt, like these guys have an opportunity to be a sure. Uh, he, I guess Hunt would be a lot yes. higher value. He'd be a top yes. 10 player. Lindsay would go back to what he was last year, which is okay. Yeah, and Royce Freeman would still have a role, and they're, they're probably never going to do more with Lindsay than what we've seen in the past, and they're probably going to do a lot less with him. So I'm just very excited for us to transfer over how we felt about the Chargers, which is watching them every week saying, why are you continuing to give Melvin Gordon the ball when Austin Eckler is dominating? I'm excited to just have that exact same conversation for uh, for Denver when Gordon is inefficient and Philip Lindsay just looks like the better player. And they will keep giving him the ball. And they will they keep will giving the ball to yeah, Gordon. <laughs> they will, for sure. Um, it's the Carlos Hyde effect. Uh, who should I keep? 
Joe Exotic in St. Louis has a question. He says, should I keep Dalvin Cook in the second round mm. or Miles Sanders in the sixth round? Oh, man. I, you take the, the value for the potential breakout. Well, I mean, he kind of had a bit of a mini breakout, except we I don't know if we've talked about on the show that the Eagles have been linked to Carlos Hyde, who was like the one name where I'm like, man, I really hope that the Eagles don't sign Carlos Hyde. They haven't signed him yet, but there's at least some rumors flying that Carlos would be there. And to me, that's a if Hyde is signed by the Eagles, that's a very big hit to Miles Sanders' fantasy production. Jay, do would would you see it that way, or would you still be real bullish about uh, Sanders? I would see it exactly that way. Uh, right now, I've got Miles right. Sanders as an RB one. He's my running back twelve. And if all of my rankings were a hundred percent perfect, then I would take you know the 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 twelfth running back in the sixth round, and then draft another uh, you know high end running back. But I have very I, my my confidence meter on Miles Sanders is not quite as high because. I just don't believe that the Eagles want to make him the bell cow. Now, I, I give a lot of credit to Doug Peterson. He uses his personnel to the best of his ability. So, so it's just so that's why he's an RB one right now because this is their personnel. But I'm going to take Dalvin Cook in the second round. It's still really good value because Dalvin Cook sure. isn't just a first rounder. He's a top five pick in the first round. So you still have your first. I'll take Dalvin in the second. That would be the way I would go. I'll take Dalvin in the second. I'll take Dalvin in the second. I'll do my cooking by the book. But I will say that uh, what Philadelphia wants to do with that backfield, they didn't have a choice in years past, whether it's Corey Clement, Ryan Matthews, Jay Ajayi, LeGarrette Blunt. These are not players that you Jordan can make. Howard. Your, you can't make those guys your bell cow. You could make a, a Miles Sanders your bell cow if you wanted to. I mean, they so, had Andy, Jordan Howard for you. be, be a – you know, he was the guy until he got injured, and then Sanders became the guy. If Carlos Hyde is signed by Philadelphia, what what happens to your rank of Miles Sanders? Uh, I have Miles Sanders at twelve right now, and it would it would it would slip down beneath okay. a handful of these guys. I, you know, what do you do? Do you take Miles Sanders with Carlos Hyde in the fold, or do you take Lev Bell? So in, in that situation, man, I'm probably that's a tough question. The whole I'm probably going to go Miles Sanders there. I find the most fascinating group. People are in love backs. with him, by the way. People Miles, love Miles. Yeah. Miles is all over Twitter. Everyone wants Miles to be the next Christian McCaffrey. Yes. They compare yes. his first season, and, and and you know, but the difference is the Eagles never drafted Miles Sanders to be Christian McCaffrey. Uh, you know, he wasn't a top ten you know pick in the draft the way Christian was. But the most fascinating running backs to me this year. I don't remember any year, uh, you know, in fantasy where you've had so many superstar running backs who are all in like lousy situations a little bit older but not old busted you got Todd Gurley but the old Melvin guys, Gordon yeah. David, David Johnson. Johnson and Lev Belt those four guys are so fascinating to me where it's like yes. you talk about Miles Sanders versus that four pack and I think if you know maybe maybe, maybe not uh Melvin Gordon but you know uh those other guys if if Carlos Hyde came in I think I would just take the safety of of those others. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it'll be interesting. <laughs> I hope he, I hope he doesn't sign there. Cause it's been nice, you know, with the draft, having some clarity of that backfield and being able to have a little more confidence in miles Sanders than we had. So, all right, that does it for the fantasy footballers podcast today. Thank you for tuning in, supporting the show, following all that good stuff. Check us out. Join the foot.com. If you want an extra episode every week, if this is not enough, you can go it's, over there and listen to on, if, of course another. it's not enough. See you soon. Goodbye. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.